Hi, welcome to the first part of this tutorial series on using GNU Radio. We're going to start by looking at the environment. The central region is where you assemble your flow graph, which consists of blocks that you connect up via these ports. This right-hand column is where you find the blocks that you can use, and the bottom section is where the output will be printed uh, that would ordinarily go to the console. Let's begin with this simple flow graph here. It generates a sine wave and plays it out on your computer speaker. Each flow graph will contain this options block. We'll skip that for the moment. The default is to create a graphical user interface. The other variable that always appears is this samp rate. This is a convenient method of setting the sample rate that will be picked up by other blocks as you drop them into your flow graph. Note that this will not set the rate at which the flow graph runs, this is simply a variable that takes a value, so this can be an arbitrary ID and an arbitrary value. The signal flow begins with the signal source. Here we're generating a sine wave, and the sample rate when we drop this block in defaults to samp rate, so that's how it's an easy way to conform the uh, value between the new blocks that you drop in. The frequency we have set here with variable f, which is defined as this slider. f relates to the ID that you specify. Amplitude is 0.5. And any properties in a block that are underlying means uh, that you can actually change them at runtime. When you actually enter values here, you see that there are color codes. If you hover your mouse over, it'll tell you what type of variable it expects. Here these are all real floating point numbers and remember that apart from specifying static values and single variables like this you can also enter complete expressions so I could multiply that by two for instance. Any valid Python you can really put in here it just has to evaluate the type that uh, the property expects. Now the sample rate is set at 8 kilohertz, but we have an audio sync which represents the sound card and this is set to 48 kilohertz. We need to get that 8 up to 48 so that the sine wave that we produce is actually what we specify. That is, the frequency that we hear will match the frequency that we set for the frequency property. And one way of doing it, that is using the rational resampler. There are other resamplers you can use as well. But in this instance, it's also easy just to enter in the frequency that uh, your input signal is coming in at, the sample rate rather, and the output sample rate, and it will calculate the greatest common divisor and apply the appropriate estimation interpolation automatically. Another thing here, you'll notice that the ports of the blocks are also color-coded. If you look at the types, you can tell what sort of type is in use. Here, these are also just real floating point streams. Out of the rational resampler, we're going to multiply every sample by 0.2, multiply const block, and then I'll go into the audio sync. One other thing to note is that floating point samples in GNU Radio should generally be normalized to range between positive and negative 1, and so the multiply const block can often be used to rescale values to fit into that range or conform to another range. Let's run this now and let's listen to what comes out of the speaker. So I've got this GUI here and as we take the frequency up and back down Let's look at the next sample. Here we have a similar setup with the sine wave signal source, but since we're not going into a hardware sync like the sound card, which is using the scope sync, which is an essentially an oscilloscope, we need to use this throttle block. The throttle block is important because without it in this setup, the graph would run as quickly as it possibly could so that it will be bounded by your CPU. If we were to have a hardware interface in here somewhere, like a USRP or an audio card, then that contains an external clock which moderates the rate at which samples are produced and consumed. Because we don't have such a thing in this flow graph, it's just going to run as quickly as possible. 
without the throttle block. So if we add it in, that will actually tell the runtime that samples coming in should only be processed and output at this particular rate. So it's like emulating an external hardware clock. Now we have a frequency set for the signal source of 1 kilohertz at amplitude 1. It splits in two here and one path goes into the first input of the scope sync. You can specify an arbitrary number of inputs and it will graph it as separate uh, signals on the scope with different colors. Again, we're just using real samples everywhere. In the second path here, it goes into the variable delay, which is available in GRBAS. This is an enhancement on the original delay block, which was fixed. However, you can actually change the delay at runtime with the variable delay. As you can see, delay is underlined, and we're using the capital D as the variable, which is controlled by the slider. We also go into a multiply cons block that has capital C as the multiply constant which is controlled by this other slider. So let's run this now. You can see the two sine waves here. Blue is the original and green is the delayed one. If we change the delay we can see it moving along and to emphasize it we can also change that multiplication factor. You can graph it as a line or as dots if you like. And another mode is the XY mode that you commonly see on oscilloscopes. If we change the delay now, it should change the ellipse. Now we can emphasize that by going to line mode to get a circle, and we change that, it'll change the sort of shape we have there, which is what you expect when you're changing the phase in between those two sine waves. Let's look at this next flow graph. Here we have a random source. You specify minimum and maximum values, the output type, which in this case is bytes, and that matches the new color on this output port. And the number of samples, the length of the random stream to generate each item in that stream ranging between these two values, and we set that to repeat so it'll continue forever. That goes into a throttle. Again, we're not using any hardware interfaces, so we need to throttle our uh, flow graph data stream. And we have the familiar signal source, which is also throttled. The signal goes into a scope, but these two both go into this any block sync. Now, any blocks are provided by GRBAS as a way to quickly prototype uh, GNU radio blocks that have a Python interface, but do not have an XML block definition for GNU radio companion. So this is an easy way to prototype things without having to create the XML. The first step is to use the import block and import BAS, and then you can use the sync which only supports inputs. There's also a source for outputs and a general one for both inputs and outputs. We specified two inputs and it will automatically infer the types from the preceding blocks. And here you can enter in a human readable description so you know what your block does. But the more important property is the maker where you specify some Python code to generate the block you're after. In this case, we're using the print char block from GRBAS, which prints a byte stream. This optional value here is a threshold value that operates on the second input stream. This is a real stream and operates like a squelch for the data that's printed out. So whenever the incoming value is above 0 0.1, it'll start printing bytes out of the console. So let's see that in action. Here we have the sine wave and you can see symbols being printed 15 bytes at a time. If we were to switch to the dots, then counting these dots above the zero line, you would count 15 of them. And that's the uh, threshold operation in progress. Another parameter you could specify as a second parameter is a maximum number of symbols to print out in one go. And then the third one would be to dump to a log file. Now in the next one we have an audio uh, source and a noise source that goes into an audio sync, a scope sync and a fast autocorrelation sync. We'll first start with the random source. Here we're outputting 16-bit signed integers that vary between negative 1 and positive 1. You'll see here that I was experimenting some different values but a little trick I do is to multiply the previous one by 0 
just so I remember what I was using and then add or subtract whatever the new value is after that because as I mentioned before it's just evaluated as normal Python. Now if we were to run this the inputs here are all real floating but this was a short output we need to convert that from short to float and you can simply do that with this block as I mentioned the values in GNU radio should be normalized between positive and negative one so that is already happening since our minimum value minimum and maximum values are already negative and positive one so if we run that we can hear a very repetitive sound and that's reflected here in the fast auto correlation because we can see these peaks popping out uh, with the periodicity of that repeating uh, random so-called random stream now let's switch to the noise source this will use uh, the uh, noise source here with a Gaussian profile to produce uh, floating point pseudo random noise. Let's run it again and crank the volume up. That sounds more like the noise we would expect and this is also reflected on the fast autocorrelation sync because there are no peaks there which would indicate no periodic components to the signal the scope looks pretty random too at all uh, time intervals as well let's look now finally at the histogram sync this is a great way of having a look at the distribution of values coming in through a signal stream we start off with the Galois linear feedback shift register. Uh, we've set the polynomial degree to 7. This will output individual bits, but the minimum uh, data width is 8 bits for a byte. So in actual fact, only one bit will be valid in each byte that's output by this block. Therefore, we use the unpack to pack block, and what that'll do is it'll extract that one valid bit from each byte coming out of the source and pack those into a byte where every bit is valid. So this effectively takes in eight bytes where one bit is valid and outputs for every one of those eight bytes one byte where all eight bits are valid. This will then produce a byte stream that if we treat them as signed bytes will vary between 127 and minus 128. To operate on this further we can see here we've got blocks that require real values. We're going to use the char to float converter and that will convert the numeric values from the byte representation into the floating point representation. So we still have floating point numbers that are varying between 127 and minus 128. To normalize it we use the multiply const and I've just put in 1 divided by 128. That though then goes to the throttle because we're not using any hardware devices and finally that feeds into the scope sync and the histogram sync if we run this. Then we see at a low level, if we zoom in on the scope, it looks roughly random, but if we zoom out enough in time, you can actually see this periodic nature of the signal. If we look at the histogram plot, then although it looked random at the low level uh, on the scope, you can see a pretty even distribution on the histogram plot and uh, although you might think that this might be indicative of, of good randomization in this case if you zoom out on the scope it, it probably isn't but nevertheless the histogram plot can be a very effective way of measuring the distribution of your values to see whether they are conforming to uh, what you would expect or not so that brings us to the end of the first part and see you in the second